You are listening to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast, where we are vigorously equipping men to pursue biblical manliness. This is our midweek, a quiet life podcast that focuses on living a quiet life, mind your own affairs, work with your hands, and be dependent upon nobody. For more information, visit us at thepursuitofmanliness.com. Well, a couple weeks ago, I think it was October 23rd, uh, I made a post uh, on the Pursuit of Manliness Instagram, I think eventually the Facebook, uh, but that there was uh, a new extension of the Pursuit of Manliness, and that is uh, Pursue Wilderness. And and I will say the response has been incredible. Um, guys that shared the post, guys that commented on the post, guys that have engaged uh, in Pursue Wilderness ever since uh, that became a reality ha- has been incredible. And I was talking to a good friend yesterday, and I said, you know, in, in some aspects, Pursue Wilderness could become bigger than Pursue Manliness when it, when it comes to, you know, just the, the social media engagement to start with. That, that really is, in, in, in the world that we live in, that really is kind of the, the, the framework for credibility that people look at that, they look at the engagement, things of that nature and say, okay, maybe there is some, there's something to this. Um, you know, that's why we wanted to post pictures of, of real people doing real things and, you know, no stock photos or anything like that. Just, you know, these things were already happening. The pursue wilderness idea, this was already happening, you know, it, from the tribe standpoint, you know, there were already a couple campouts. There was already a retreat. There was already a couple hikes. There was already, you know, some meetups and things going on. And so we we knew from from that community, which I'll, I'll say this: what is this? November uh, 9th, You have eleven days to sign up for the next session of tribe. I'm telling you, you should do it. Uh, it is unlike any community you have ever been a part of. I, I guarantee that. But nevertheless, so made the post and said, "Hey, man, we we want to uh, we." We want to help bring people in on this, and we want we want to you know celebrate people going out into the wilderness, outdoors, having these experiences. We want to um, we we want to resource you up, give you some free resources like the 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 midweek um, was that devotional, the the Friday night campfire deal. We we want to want to resource you up that way, and, and and then there was an incentive as well. I said, hey, if you go out. And you create some sort of, you know, adventure. Go for a walk with your wife. I man, I really don't care what it is, but just get outdoors. Uh, as a thank you, uh, I want to send you um, some Pursue Wilderness pins. And this is something that started, um, I don't know, a year or two ago, and it's kind of taken off within the pursuit of manliness. So that I thought pins was the the thing I would go with with Pursue Wilderness. And um, so I don't know if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that we can't see it real well, but nevertheless. Um, and I'll say this, if you've received a pin, there is a, 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 a film on the pin that if you peel back, um, it, it's that much more like vibrant when, when you take it off. So just, I wasn't going to peel off every film for the pins, but um, you, you guys have responded. And if you're new to this, let me just say this was this was the hook. I said, if you go out and you do these things and, and, and you take a picture, like a, go selfie mode, take a picture of yourself and the people that are with you, tag us tag me on uh social media and then then i'll get your address we'll work to get your address and then we'll um i'll send you some pins here's the problem i made a mistake i'm I'm not that social media savvy and i think you know that um <clears throat> and i'm not trying to pretend like i am it didn't cross my mind that if you tag pursue wilderness and i don't follow you i'll never see the tag and so it's it's impossible, obviously, to anticipate who's going to post a picture. It's impossible to know that if your spouse or your kids will post the picture. So uh, realize pretty early on that that little uh, that wasn't going to work. So I still want you to tag Pursue Wilderness because I think it's good for people to see that tag and say, okay, what is that? Because I know for me, I'll look at images and I'll see tags, and there might be one or two that catch my eye, and I'll think, oh, I, I didn't I didn't know that was a thing. So. Um, I still want you to do that, but he, here's here's what I need. I need you, if you want to pursue wilderness pen, I need you to send the pictures to me, pursue manliness at gmail.com. So you just drop them in an email. Um, I don't care about the size and all that. I, I think they, we got a little bit of everything. Um, 
sent them to me. I'd love for you to tell me what's going on. Hey, this is my wife and I. We're on a hike in you know Arkansas, whatever. Um, we do this every year, whatever. I, I mean, I don't need the whole story, but just just a little bit helps. Um, and then if if you have more than your wife, or just like, hey, would love to have three pins or whatever it is. Okay, so I, I'd love to send those to you. Um, there's no strings attached. Uh, believe me, you guys that have received them, you know, there, there was no string attached except for, I need the email. I need the pictures. And here's the other thing. Um, I need your address. Like I need you to send me your address. I can't tell you how many guys, and it's a lot who have sent me pictures of them doing stuff and there's no address. So even if you've bought gear in the past and you think, well, he knows my address cause he sent me a hat or shirt or whatever. Um, I still need that because the email I'm kind of old school here. Now the email is the way that I keep track of, um, if I've sent the pins to you and if I have, uh, if I've posted those images, because I will post them on the, on the account, um, at, at some point, you know, not right away, but at some point. And so for me to look at those emails, I can see who has and who hasn't. And I have, um, I, I, I have an Excel sheet that I keep track of <clears throat> how many, you know, the guys that have done it, their address, how many pins they're asking for and the date that you, you had sent me the message. So if you are saying, Hey, where's my pins? And you didn't email me. Um, that's they're They're not, they're not coming your way. I need, I need your email and I need your, your mailing address. Um, and, and I've sent these out. And again, my, my vision was, uh, it would be cool for you to go back to, you know, those three people, whatever, and say, Hey, here's, well, what's this for? Well, this is just a, you know, a group I'm a part of, and this is the way they say thanks. So if you do that once, I'll send you the pins. You do it again, uh, like second time you say, Hey, we're out again. We're doing, um, you know, if there's a new guy or something, let me know. Hey, this, here's Bob. He doesn't have a pin. Would you send one for him? Great. Um, I'll send you some stickers maybe the next time. And then the third time, I'll probably just give you a virtual high five, just fist bump or something like that. We don't want to send out, you know, wheelbarrow fulls of pins all the time. But if there is something going on, naturally, we want to do that. And, and I said last time, we're, we're committing to doing this till you know, November 1st of next year just to try to create, again, this community and a conversation about let's get get outside, let's let's get going. Um, I'll say this before I get into my next point. I think these all bleed together. When you when you when this is over, I think I think you'll agree. Um, I want to encourage you to create some new adventure. Okay, don't I, I would say don't go through the camera roll and just pull out some pictures from you know a year ago and say this is where we went, and it, that's great. But um, then the idea is let's be forward thinking. Let's be. I know on my phone I have pictures from. A couple vacations ago, you know, several hikes ago, just places I'm like, man, I don't want to forget that, or that was a great family picture, or whatever. So I keep that on there. Uh, but I'm going to encourage you, man, create some new ones. And, and I know, depending on where you live in the country, it <clears throat> it may be a hot minute before you can get out and go, and go do something if the weather's changing and stuff. Don't worry about it. I, I'll still I'll hook you up. Um, the, again, there's no strings attached here. This is not a a money making scheme by any means. Um, so I'm I'm trying to say, hey, I want to I want to say thank you to you guys that do that. Because I know for me, again, getting outside, measuring myself against the the environment, the elements, you know, having those experiences is is really really valuable. So I'll summarize with that. Please shoot me the email. Let me know you know who's in the picture, what you're doing. Um, I want you to be in the picture, okay? Um, I know what trees and gravel and stuff look like, so I want you to be in it. Yes, other pictures are great too. Um, I'm not trying to micromanage this, but um, I do need your mailing address. But now, if you want to tag Pursue Wilderness and you're like, I'm not looking for anything in return. I just want to tag Pursue Wilderness because this is a part of the community. I'm part of this community. Um, that's great. I just want you to know, if you're looking for the pins and and and, and you know, and again, I'm not not holding these things hostage. I've been mailing them out all the time. I got a couple more that are um, I'm gonna have to uh, package up here. Um, I need that email. I need that email with your mailing address. So, and I, again, I want you to create some new things, new experiences. This last Friday, my wife and I uh, went car camping, and that's something that I, I've wanted to turn a vehicle into, you know, a place to stay. You guys know this podcast. You know that like my long term vision would be to have you know, like an RV set up where maybe I just live, live on the road, live, you know, wherever. And you can go wherever you can park wherever. And I know it's a lot more complicated than that, but that that's, that's long-term, man, I would love to do that. And so, uh, earlier, you know, about a month ago, I got a, a Toyota RAV4, uh, which was an upgrade as far as the vehicle and the space and stuff over, I used to have a Suzuki Vitara, um, not a lot of space in there. So the, the, the RAV4, so I went online to say, okay, let's see, check out these guys who go RAV4 camping. I'm curious how this works because uh, there's a lot of different components. You can put a tent on top. You can do, you know, out the back of the hatch or whatever. 
And the first couple of videos I came across, the people uh, were, um, they were living out of their car. And I, and I mean, immediately I thought, I want to live out of my car. And immediately the Holy Spirit said, you have a wife and three kids. That's not going to happen. So um, so that's not going to happen. So what I did is I spent the next whatever amount of time, because I became obsessed with this, of trying to figure out how, you know, you can get like a, a bed frames of sort, you know, mattress in there, whatever, like the camping type stuff. And so I found one, got that put in there. You know, you have to level it out because the way the seats lay down and stuff. And so we, uh, last Friday went, to a state park about an hour plus from here and it was great you know we opened the hatch up pulled out the coleman stove you know the table camping chairs whatever and within you know minutes where we got food going we got a fire going uh we made coffee armor nation of course we made some dessert that night and just hung out by the fire took a walk around like the, the camping area and things and it was easy and, and i will say we slept really well Naturally, getting in and out of an SUV if you're camping is not like standing next to your bed. There is a little more logistics to it as far as um, you can't stand up. You know, you can't necessarily sit up either. But once you get in and you lay down, like, man, we slept great. Had the windows down. Uh, had the netting. I didn't know that was a thing. But the netting that goes over the back and just to, so you get air moving in and out of your windows but have them down. Uh, we had a great time. A really, really good time. And one of the takeaways as we were coming home was just how simple it was. The next day it began to um, rain, rain sideways a bit. There was strong wind warnings and stuff. So we said, you know what? Probably no hiking today. Probably probably need to get rolling. So uh, we had a couple things sitting out still. There was a picnic table there. They were sitting under the table. We put them in the back of the car, shut the hatch, drove away. It was easy. We didn't pull stakes up. We didn't have to put stuff, things back in bags. We didn't have to level nothing out. Uh, nothing. We, we literally put like what two or three things back in the car and drove away and we were talking about that where how simple it was and so then you're thinking okay well what if the weather was this that or the other well how can we change this and i i want to i want to stay with that idea that it was just simple and i think i know i'm guilty of over complicating things especially things like that but i think um i think it's uh it's important to, to just keep it simple like as we walked around that campground, there were guys with you know, large RVs or different types of like teardrop campers and and all these you know fifth wheels and all that. There were guys in hammocks. There was a guy like in a lean to because he's riding his bike. Um, there there was everything. And to me, it's a really a, an, an image of the Christian walk. I mean, it's literally everything. And to to see someone or see their disciplines or see you know, where they're at in their journey of faith or, you know, how they do certain things, that may not be for you in that season right now. And and that's okay. Like, I, I, I'm not in a season of life where I could even have an RV in reality. It's not that I have RV money, but by any means. But I, starters, I have nowhere to park it. Second of all, I got a lot to learn. But I love the idea. Like, I am a, you know, I'm a lone wolf getaway. I love that. that but believe me. I, I, we went right around the RV guys as they're trying to get their fresh water and all the things they're doing now. Maybe their experience was much different than ours. Uh, nevertheless, wasn't the goal the same? And so I, I think that's I think that's important that we we don't need to overcomplicate the Christian walk. Let's just keep it simple. So the next day after we came back from camping at church, <clears throat> I was outside. And I'm talking to a couple friends, and uh, this this young man walks up. He's probably in his late 20s, and he's kind of looking in the parking lot. So to me, I'm thinking he must be waiting for someone in the parking lot. Maybe he's meeting someone at, for church or whatever. And, and I said, are, are you looking for someone? He said, no. I said, are you good? You know, because I don't, I don't know. Is he lost or what? You know, he said, no, I've never been to church before. And I could tell he wasn't sure he was going to be there that time either. And I said, well, that streak is over. So come on in. And as he got closer to the door, we have this giant of a human guy who's a greeter. And he said, you know what? Seven years ago, I was in the same boat. I came here, never left. And uh, to me, I'm thinking, well, that, that's got to comfort you a little bit. I don't, I mean, I don't know this guy, you know, from Adam, but um, there's another guy. He's at the, he's a friend of mine. He's kind of a burly guy. He shakes his hand and he says, uh, you can sit with me. And uh, when he says you can sit with me, he means you will sit with me. So when they come in, I'm, I'm up front. I can see what's going on. The kid kind of milling around and the guy said come on 
so he came and sat by him, and they had some kind of conversation. And uh, we say it all the time, like, if you don't have a Bible, the Bible in front of you is our gift to you. You know, we love buying Bibles, so that that's a good thing. And I saw that he had a Bible at the end of service. That guy um, prayed for him, whatever. So as he walked away, I said, so you got some friends? Or, you know, well, you know, and he kind of gives me a story there. And I could tell, like, he's really uncomfortable. And so naturally, you're trying to figure out, like, why are you uncomfortable? Are you uncomfortable because you're not used to someone asking these type of questions? Are you uncomfortable because you're, you're in church? Like, you know, I got all these different scenarios in my head. So I said, well, let me just cut to the chase. This is about Jesus, okay? This isn't about this building. It's not about the songs we sing. It's not about anything else. This, this life, it is about Jesus. And you can tell, you're really uncomfortable with that. And I said, let me see that Bible. So I said, I'm going to tell you right now, here's where you need to start. Well, I went to John, the guy that had him sit by him had already went to John. I said, okay, he's already, he beat me to it. This, this is what you need to read. I said, you, you, need, you need to think about that. Like God woke you up today for a reason. You're here. I don't think this is an accident. And so I, I start, you know, go through, like, this is about Jesus. And so we talked about praying and getting in the Word, which would be very foreign to a guy Again, who's who's never probably had someone, uh, I don't know, challenge him on that, or even I, I don't know. I don't know where he's. I'm just I'm just taking you know all, my brief interaction with him. I say that because I want to tell you that, that that the Christian life we don't need to make it complicated. If you boil it down to two things, prayer and the word. You say what about church and worship? Prayer and the word. Prayer is where we're able to converse with God and we're able to talk with Him, but we're also able to listen. I don't listen well, so I need to pause and let God speak to me, and let Him, you know, tell me things and uh, tell me, you know, reveal areas that I need to grow or whatever. And then the Word, the Word gives me understanding about how I'm supposed to live and how I'm supposed to worship and how I'm supposed to go to church and how I'm supposed to. Um, reading Second uh, Samuel today, where the, the ark comes back in and David's dancing and singing and worshiping and. Michael, not a fan of that, and that's that's why we that's why we get awkward around worship and prayer and stuff. We're afraid people are going to judge us and what they're going to think of us. It's unnecessary. Prayer and the Word. If you want to boil it down, we looked at our car camping and said, you know what? I think we brought exactly what we needed to bring. We used the things we had. There wasn't too many things that were left, you know, in our tote of, of like kitchen stuff that we we didn't use. Uh, obviously, we didn't go hiking, so some of that stuff was irrelevant to the trip. But overall, we didn't take excess. You know, I think it's I think it's can be easy to see, you know, someone have a personal quiet time, you know, in this in in the the chair with the lamp and the sharpies and the Christian music and the, the maybe the incense burning over here and your cup of coffee that says it's all about Jesus and you know, you could have this just great thing and someone can see that and say, I don't have that. That 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 does I should not minimize your relationship with Jesus. Maybe that's something you work towards going, I, I need to be more intentional with my quiet time or I need to find a, a space that's less distracting. I, I don't know, but don't minimize the fact. Prayer in the Word. I told that guy, I said, listen, you need to go home today. You need to have a conversation with God. And believe me, he can take it. Whatever you're going to tell him, he already knows. He can take it. And you need to open this up and you need to start reading it because you need to reconcile for yourself. I could stand up there all day and tell you this, that, or the other. You need to reconcile that for yourself. And if you've never been here, this is overwhelming. This is a way that you can read that and say, if that is true, what do I do with that? It's I, when you boil it down, we consider John chapter fourteen verse six. Now, I didn't tell him start you know verse chapter and all that because that, that's a lot right there. I, John fourteen six, Jesus says, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life." There's nothing that guy's going to tell me that doesn't fall in line with what Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. This guy's talking about where he lives, where he works friends he has, doesn't have, whatever. Jesus says, I reconcile all that. So when I talk to him, I'm telling him it's about Jesus. I don't have to tell him sermon, again, chapter, verse. Uh, there was no talk of where you at with all your isms. There was no talk of, now you got to understand there's different denominations. We, we didn't do that. I didn't get into... So why don't you, here's the end times views. Let's get three or four of these out here. Let's just see where you land uh, because this is important because this will dictate the type of Facebook groups you join and the friends you have. So let's talk about some end times views. All I did is say, you know what? It, it is about Jesus. He may go home and come across a, a TV preacher. He may get on YouTube and find 
you know, some preaching or worship. What I, I don't know what the rest of the guy's day or week or whatever entailed, but if he'll at least consider Jesus, that that's a game changer. There, people have no problem talking about God. They have no talk, problem talking about religious practices or I'm a person of faith or a private faith or, you know, I say some prayers or I... It has to, it has to be connected to Jesus, and I think we just need to keep it simple. Like we just need to not make this thing overly complicated. Don't lose the common denominators, okay? Let's not trim it down so much that suddenly it doesn't resemble anything. It has to be about Jesus. The practices we have to incorporate prayer and get in the Word. Get yourself a printed copy. Mark it up, if you will. Put Post-it notes, highlighters, whatever. I, I I don't have a system. I just do, in that moment, what I feel like is, is good for that particular text. But let's just, again, make sure it's about Jesus. And, and I use the illustration of the isms and the end times, and, and, and I didn't get into translations. I, man, what was I thinking? I, I think... I think there are places for that conversation. I think we need to be very, very mindful of who is observing our conversations. I don't think our Facebook posts are the places to do it. Unless you just have all believers who are on the same mindset as your Facebook friends. Because, again, a guy like that, if if he was my Facebook friend and and we're having this conversation about isms and... um, you know, free will, election, uh, post-millennial, amillennial, all these, de- 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 you know, your translation is the only translation, and that's the one. Uh, doesn't that seem like something that an outsider would say, I don't want any part of that. I, I-, I do not want any part of that. When Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary, heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I look at people like that and say, they are weary and heavy laden, and they need rest. To my knowledge, that's at least the second young guy who's come to our church who's never been to a church before. And I'm telling you, these guys are nervous. They're unsettled. They're not sure about what they're wearing. Um, it's uncomfortable. And and I, <clears throat> I, I'm thankful that I, I, I don't remember being a time where I had not been to church. <clears throat> but I know there's times I've walked into places that I've never been before and thought, I don't want to be here. I'm going to get out of here as, as soon as I can. Let's not make this more complicated than it needs to be. I want to share this verse with you. Acts chapter 10, verse 37 to 38. This is one of my favorite. Uh, 38 is my, one of my favorite verses of the Bible because, again, I'm, I'm just a simple guy. I want to keep it simple with us. It says, You yourselves know what happened to Peter talking throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism of John proclaimed how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good. Went around doing good things and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with them. That's 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 us. As you go about this day, do some good. Not to get credit, not to hey, where's my attaboy? I'm expecting a you know a pay increase at the end of the year because of the good I did today. Just go around and do good, healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Um, why was that guy at church? Conviction. Conviction. There's some sort of conviction that brought him to that place. He could have went anywhere, anywhere in this city on that day. He picked a church. He went there. He sat through the whole thing. Good on him. I hope we see him again. Is he oppressed by the devil? Absolutely. Absolutely. Apart from Jesus, we all are. Apart from Jesus, we all are. You know, Paul said that what some of you once were, we forget what we once were. Maybe because we've been this so long, you forget that you that was you. Or maybe, again, like me, I don't remember a time of not really going to church. Uh, as far as attendance, that was pretty normal. But understanding sin, forget no, I, that took a long time. So he, Jesus went around, he did good, he healed all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. That's you, God is with you. There's nowhere we're going to go that God is not with us. But as we talk about here, this quiet life, mind our own affairs, work with our hands, be dependent upon nobody. I I didn't preach a sermon to that guy, and you don't have to do it either. Now, he did just sit through a sermon of mine um, you know, 15 minutes earlier, but I I want to encourage you with that. Like, that's the conversation we can have with people. Listen, I don't know your church background. 
I don't know what you believe or don't believe. I don't know your perception of, of Jesus or Christians. I think some people have a perception of Jesus that he hates them. He doesn't hate them. He loves them. He loves them more than they would will ever possibly love themselves. And then I think some people get an impression of Jesus that he'll just take it. He'll just take it. He's like a stuffed animal. You hug him once in a while, but it's okay to throw him around, stick him under the bed, you know, whatever. No. No, I would encourage you to go to Revelation and realize that ain't him. That That is not him. Uh, they will never get their hands on him again. So Jesus doesn't hate you, and he's not a chump. So when we say it's all about Jesus, we mean it's all about him. Like You, you have to get that right. Did he tell the truth? He is the way. The way where? The way to heaven. The way to live. He's the way. He's the truth. What truth? The absolute truth. The truth that doesn't need any uh, bedazzling, anything. No, it is the truth. Anything that's grounded in truth, Jesus says, I'm the truth and the life. This one and the next one. Man, if we get that right, everything else gets a little bit simpler, doesn't it? I'll talk to you all in a bit. Thank you for listening to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast. If you would, make sure to visit iTunes and leave a five-star review to let others know what you think of this show. When you get a chance, make sure to visit thepursuitofmanliness.com to see what is available in the gear store, find more information out about Tribe, and much more. Thanks for listening, and let's keep pursuing biblical manliness. Manliness.